I have to tell you, and I, I'll never forget seeing your video at CPAC, C, uh, CPAC a few years ago, and I thought, wow, that kid is really bright, really smart. He's very poised in front of a microphone. Uh, but I just thought uh, it, it, it made me feel uh, a little bit bad that, that a kid that young had his thinking all locked in on everything. And it turns out your thinking wasn't so locked in. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've really changed. I think that for me, politics isn't really being about being a part of an ideology or being a part of a party. It's about just being yourself and what, what you feel is right. I don't think I have all the answers then. I don't think I have all the answers now. I don't think anybody has all the answers at any point in their life. I just feel that it was naive of me to really think that I knew everything then and not open my mind to the possibility of other, of other things being correct. Well, I got to tell you, every 14-year-old I've known seems to think they think they know everything. And it is true that by the time you're headed to uh, freshman year in college, you realize, whoa, this university has a lot of stuff that I don't know. Uh, and so uh, I'm glad you're entering NYU with exactly the right kind of open mind. And this is not to say that you've moved over to becoming a liberal, is it? No, I mean, I have a lot more left-leaning ideas than right-leaning ideas, I guess, now. But I, I just don't want to be boxed in. I mean, maybe maybe it's just having what I call label phobia. I don't want to be labeled as anything. Um, and maybe I'll get over that and call myself something at some point. But I just, I just don't want to be called anything. Sure, I have more left-leaning ideas now, and, I, and, that, and, and, I've, and I've talked about that recently. But I, I, I don't want to be called this ideology or that ideology. I just want to be able to talk about my ideas. And, you're, you're, and I don't think I've got it all figured out, so why box myself in now? Right, and your, your development in, in this uh, started with uh, slipping away from what you call the social conservative ideas. Yeah, I mean, that's really where it started. I mean, part of what happened was after the second book came out when I was about 14, I really started reading uh, philosophy, you know, and, I, and I've mentioned that, you know, uh, Kant, Hegel, Schopenhauer, Nietzsche, and then I started getting into um, people like Kripke and Chalmers and lots of people. But I, I really gave myself a breather from politics and let myself get away from that in order to just see what I believe now. And then when I revisited everything else, I realized, you know, I don't really agree with everything I wrote then. So I should just move on. And the first thing to go was really my social conservative ideas because they just seemed so regimental, so structured, so dogmatic, and I didn't want to be a part of that. That was the most dogmatic part of it. And I don't like being so in such a um, place that it's so, it's so, uh, suppre it, it suppresses me. I mean, it, it really just makes me feel like I have to agree with this or I'm not a part of anything or I'm a bad person. I don't want to be a part of that. I'd rather just have my, my ability to have my opinion on any issue I want. And so I left and started having uh, more socially liberal positions after that. Jonathan, uh, if, if we weren't running out of time, which we are, I'd have to end the interview right now because you've already cited more philosophers than you've read than I have read. And so you're now officially, uh, I'm out, you're out of my depth. Uh, uh, you're way over my head.